Today I will bring you to a full wedding day captured from the perspective of my GoPro sitting right on top of my camera. In this exclusive wedding video, every shot will be captured through the lens of the Fujifilm 23mm f1.4 lens paired with the Fujifilm X-T4. Watch as every moment unfolds from candid glances to joyous celebrations. I am giving you an intimate look at the behind the scenes magic. While the video moves along, I will share my settings and how I export for different scenes in very bright and challenging lighted conditions today. If you are not yet subscribed, please subscribe to this channel. I like to arrive at least one hour before um, the start time. This gives me an opportunity to actually uh, do detail shots. And right now I'm just trying to take some sh pictures of the shoes and the jewelry. Uh, by getting there a little earlier, you will feel less rushed and you can actually do the pictures that you want before the guests get there. And so right now uh, we're in a small town outside of Ottawa, Ontario called Castleman. And it's uh, a farm style wedding and luckily the weather is going to cooperate today um, even though it's going to be a very very bright sunny day um, we're right now taking pictures of, of all of the details um, inside the uh, the reception room which is essentially a big um, diffuser a, a dome if you will that acts as a diffuser which makes images very very nice um, doesn't require you to use flash essentially you are inside a flash um, although my GoPro shows that it, it's it's reflecting a lot of warm tones, uh, it's actually a lot a lot nicer in, inside the reception room. So we still have a few more hours uh, before all the guests get there and the ceremony yeah, gets here. So I can't go back there. Because yeah, because they staple the curtain up. Oh, okay. So as you can see, I'm working with a second today, and uh, I'm trying to essentially take picture every single detail I, I can possibly find um, and so I saw this lovely um, sign and I figured my couples will probably want it might as well take a picture I've got a few hours to kill now when you're working with a second photographer um, you'll likely get in each other's way and so it's Mars, it's nice to have uh, sliding over you just know, a little bit someone who Please. has a bit Thank more experience you. who ensure that you know you're not getting he, he or she is not getting caught in a lot of the uh, backdrop um that's really really critical because sometimes it can ruin a, a photo shoot but uh luckily we're working with a really good second today So I was thinking here is the closest I can find the shade. Yeah, that's perfect. And, uh, and then we should be okay here. Okay. All right, yeah. so we're gonna do group shots. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll have like two of you on this side, yeah. three on the other side. And, and my then, mom uh, yes. on either side, actually. Yeah, absolutely. You can come in in the middle, mom. Right there. Right there. Okay. And then, uh, actually, I'll have another person go on this side. Sounds good, and then after that, we'll do individual photos with you. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, can you guys switch maybe? Perfect. Uh, yeah, she's made up honor. Is she? Okay, sounds good. Sorry, go back then. Please yeah, ignore me. No, 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 no worries. No worries. If you want, I can switch. Yeah. No, okay. All good. So we're now in the uh, getting ready portion of the wedding. Um, we have a bit of, of downtime. So I, I decided to take the ladies out for um, a photo shoot um, with their gowns. Uh, we're 
I usually typically work, um, I, I narrow down my groups essentially. So anytime I have a large group to photograph, I will start with, with a bigger group and then just trim down and up until we do individuals. So as the title says today, we're working with the Fujifilm 23 millimeter F1.4. Um, in terms of uh, full frame equivalent, it is the 35 millimeter uh, prime lens. It is going to be my go-to lens today essentially most of the shot you will see um, are going to be from that lens and uh, i'm going to be doing for this particular wedding hybrid coverage so essentially i'll be doing photo video with it um, it is for photography uh, 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 a near perfect lens um, absolutely fantastic when it comes to uh, giving you uh, low light capability that's really where it excels um, it's also really good to give you soft images. Um, I don't typically shoot wide open. I usually will close it down to f1.8 or f2. Find that that's the um, right um, balance between bokeh and having relatively sharp images. For video, um, it's not exactly ideal. It's not an image stabilized lens. Um, and so you can introduce um, quite a bit vibration, unfortunately. Um, that's not what this lens was originally designed for, um, but it, it is it is for video um, really good. But again, uh, you'll have to do a lot of post production um, and basically using warp stabilizer for quite a bit of your footage, just because it is again not a not a stabilized lens. But for photography, it's perfect, nearly perfect. So hold on, I'm just gonna get ahead of you guys. And then as you're coming in, I'm going to take some pictures. Yeah. So les messieurs sont arrivés. James, get out! Move! Get inside! We're good! We're good. Oh, James. <laughs> Where should I go? Yeah, yeah, you're just right here, the lens, right here, the lens, the lens. One big smile. And then if you don't mind showing, kind of like find a way to like show the brush where I talk for. Wow. Don't be shy uh, to set up a scene uh, every now and then for your uh, fo photo shoot. Um, sometimes things will develop on its own, but uh, periodically you need to step in and, and essentially get get them to interact with each other. Oui, mais vas-y, uh, c'est pas dans on le ouais, C'est correct, c'est correct. Beautiful. And I'm just going to have you stand a little bit directly in front of me. Hold the bouquet like that. Perfect. And then look at me. Beautiful. And then just bring the bouquet a little closer. And then one big smile. The what? Brides of uh, Maid of Honor? You'll have. And then maybe we can get another person to come in. You want to just help her put the shoes on? So just pretend that you're helping, maybe yeah. one person. Yeah, that's just... perfect. Right, perfect. Perfect, thank you guys. So now I kind of coach the, the ladies to uh, come in and help out with her shoes. Uh, I think that it makes for a really, really nice quote-unquote candid images um, usually if you're if you do photography long enough you might over hyper focus on on the bride sometimes but getting the uh, the the bridesmaids involved is really really a good idea so now I brought her up to the window uh, to do some detail shots so she's putting on her earring here and uh, as you can see I'm not using any flash uh, for this particular scene. It's not necessary. As long as you bring the up to a window, you can get all of the lighting that you generally need. And uh, we were lucky today in a way uh, that we didn't need to use flash indoors. Um, but you'll see later on the video that uh, all that sun is going to become problematic when it comes to doing the family formals. But for now, uh, so far, so good. 
um, one of the uh, r limitations that you might find with a 23 millimeter uh, f1.4 is is the fixed focal length um, but that's uh, you know a, a sort of a give and take essentially um, but you know when you find yourself outdoors it, it might become just limiting in terms of you know trying to move around a scene and trying to capture some you know pictures and, and getting your framing right you'll have to walk uh, up and down unfortunately um, that's just the reality of using a prime lens so we're now doing a, a first look this today um, we were trying to you know capture the audio um, the the groom the grooming is is mike right now but as you can see from the backdrop all of those trees uh, the way those trees are moving it's a really windy day so uh, we were not able to record a single um single conversation happening between the bride and groom but you know we got some pretty awesome um footage of both photo and video so it was a really nice uh moment to for the two of them uh before the chaotic yeah, coming, part of the wedding worry. begins but then i'm not here <laughs> So as you can see right now, uh, the only place where there was uh, an ounce of shadow was basically uh, right up against that tall fence. Um, nowhere on the property were there any kind of like shade. So we had to like essentially snuggle up to that wall. Um, we had no, we had no chance. We had no, we had no other choice. Um, but uh, the client liked their their images, so if they like them, I like them. Good, that's good. <laughs> so we're gonna need I need you guys to shift a little bit so we're even with the door. <laughs> yeah, this is a yeah. Yeah, and if the bouquet could all be at the same height, so if you bring yours down, bring yours up a little bit, Isabelle. C'est bon. Beautiful. All right, and now, now look at each other. Good laugh. Good. But then you heard the best joke ever. <laughs> One of the things that attracted me to the Fujifilm system really is the the uh, color color science. Uh, as you saw in the pictures before, uh, it barely needs any any um, post production. Uh, Besides exposing properly, honestly, Fujifilm has nailed that 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 look. Um, I would say arguably one of the best um, color science of all camera brands. Um, and it's even true for f videography right here. This this is an actual f direct footage, unedited from the XD4. Um, as you can see, there is no need to uh, add any kind of preset or lot over over the video footage. It's it saves me so much on the back end using Fujifilm. Um, I would highly recommend for anybody who hasn't fully committed to a camera band to really look into the Fuji system. Um, that's just uh, an awesome starter camera, uh, ca camera brand, if you will. So now we're moving into the ceremony portion uh, of the wedding. Um, I'm doing some drone shots here. I took a chance and flew it through the actual uh, corridor, if you will, nearing near miss, basically almost missing a tree at one point, but uh, it worked out in the end. All right, so typically I will uh, post uh, myself right across from the groom. Um, it's it's too awkward. It's yeah. the, it's too it's too on an angle. Okay. So I'm gonna have to do everything handheld. Okay. So here I was trying to post myself where I think I'll have the best uh, you know position to capture the 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 bridal party coming down the aisle. 
I usually like to park myself on the right side uh, across from the groom um, and I usually will uh, post a, a camera on a monopod um, so that way I can just focus on photography and I'm not like going back and forth between my photo camera and video camera um, trying to minimize my stress but unfortunately we were kind of on, on a hill a little bit so like a monopod was a no-go essentially um, so I had to resort to uh, my dual camera harness system for to capture both the photo and video so now I'm just going around taking a picture of the guests um, try to take picture of of scenes that your your couple may not Thank see you. on their wedding day so that way when they uh, when they go back and look at their album they'll, they'll have images that they weren't present for and I think that brings them back to the wedding day from a perspective that they didn't get an opportunity to see One of the things that I learned doing wedding videography or photography uh, in my time is that um, no one will wait for you. So <laughs> make sure you're, you're, you're where you're supposed to be because ceremonies will begin with or without you. It happened to me one time where the ceremony essentially began. I was in the, uh, the room with the bride um, and the bridal party walked down the aisle and uh, I missed the in that, that portion of the wedding. Luckily, my couple weren't upset about it it's just is how things uh, rolled around but for you newbies uh, make sure you're at the, your, at your proper position when uh, the ceremony start because it will begin without you so the images that you're seeing right now especially the photography portion uh, I'm using the 7200 um, just a 35 millimeter would be way too limited um, you're not you don't want to make it the wedding about you so you definitely want to use lenses that will give you a bit of reach and I will let you uh, be in the background now back to the 35 here um, capturing some video um, but when it comes to the photos um, I usually like to stand back a little bit and uh, that's when I, I use my 7200 that's really the only time I you I will use that lens uh, throughout the wedding day So you will notice that I will usually um, stay in the back, but from time to time I'll walk up maybe halfway up the aisle um, so that I can, you know, get some pictures and some emotion from my couple, but also their guests. Um, it's very important that you capture real emotions and some tears. It brings a little bit more um, life to, to your gallery, I would find, especially for video if you can catch a couple tears. Um, I think it does your video good uh, right now. I'm back on the 35 from that shot that you saw the white the white angle now I'm back on the 7200 um, It's the only way that I'll be able to get those images um, Right at the right before you know the first kiss. I will typically set my camera to burst mode um, For the first kiss specifically just so that I have multiple frames now we're, we're the ceremony is over now, so now I'm waiting in the back and taking basically photo and video uh, of of the bridal party. I'm essentially exiting the the, the ceremony. So in this particular scene, uh, my couple asked me to do a group group photo 
uh, for them and uh, unfortunately as you can see the there's quite a people cut off it's just that the, th the 23 millimeter is just uh, and not, it's not wide enough um, and I should have known better um, and probably should have used my drone for this particular shot um, it was a lesson learned for for me the 35 is again a prime lens that has a 35 millimeter equivalent full frame and and it's just not often wide enough A what? A dip kiss? Yeah, maybe? yeah, absolutely, if you want to. If, if that's okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love it when sometimes guests decide to come up with their own poses. Uh, it, it really adds to the to the day. So, here are all of the wedding poses that one can do. If you want to go through it and then pick one, then you could be there, you can be an assistant. Let's go. Good. That's a fun job. Nice. Alright. Perfect. And then I'm gonna have you kiss and hold it there. I know it's gonna be a little hurt. Oh. 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 Don't be shy in getting your your um, the guest in in the actual uh, you know get get some some ideas from them. Sometimes they come up with some pretty cool stuff. So we're now back to the uh, we're, we're now at the ceremony stage of the of the wedding. So the majority of the chaotic part of the day has is is over now, and uh, we're we're in back indoor, uh, right in the dome or the reception hall, if you will. I don't like to take pictures of people uh, eating usually, um, maybe one or two, but uh, ideally you want to give people a break uh, during this part of the day. Um, if you want to capture a couple, that's fine. Um, but uh, full disclosure, I am on the 56 f1.2 for this particular. Uh, the shots is just because I wouldn't have been able to get close enough to, to my subject if I was using the 35. But I am now. I now have the camera on a tripod, and I'm doing the. I'm, I'm capturing a video of the speeches, and I am back on the uh, on the 23 at this point. It is now golden hour, um, and I'm gonna take my couples outside for uh, a quick uh, golden hour photo shoot. If you can ever squeeze. Uh, a particular shoot at this time of the day it makes for some really awesome pictures um, you're not necessarily going to be able to have this opportunity at every wedding but for some reason the schedule was well well put together and things were spread out and spaced out really well that I was able to do a first look and a golden hour photo shoot so lucky me All right, so we're coming on to the uh, back end of the wedding. So now we're cutting the cake. I am on the 23 once again, um, and it's it was it was hard to keep the image steady right now, uh, specifically on the dance floor, um, with people sort of bumping into you and introducing you know shaky footage into your into your film. Um, but you know you got to live with it. Um, that's why Warp Stabilizer exists for those of you who are using uh, Premiere Pro. Um, it really can cut out a lot of like jittery images. And uh, these are the last few images of the wedding day. Now that I own the 23mm f1.4, 
would I buy it again? And the simple answer is absolutely. I think it's a fantastic lens that belong in anyone's kit. The focal length is ideal for candid coverage. The low f-stop at f1.4 is amazing for giving you beautiful bokeh. Um, that lens really shine at night, uh, especially when you're dealing with um, little ambient lighting. It really comes in into form. Now, having said that, it is a prime lens, so it does have some limitation. You will have to basically zoom with your feet. Uh, when you are outdoors, that might be a bit wide, so therefore you might have to go with something tighter. Um, and then when it comes to using it for video coverage, um, the fact that the, this particular lens does not have vibration control, it makes it a bit hard uh, for, for me to use it uh, handheld. Uh, and I can mitigate that factor with uh, using Premiere Pro, uh, some, some tricks behind uh, Premiere Pro, specifically the uh, warp stabilizer. Uh, it, it, it helps a little bit, but still, uh, there's still a bit more jitter in the, f in the footage and it, it makes the pro processing uh, significantly longer. Uh, but otherwise, if it was just for photography, I think it's an ideal lens. I would highly recommend it. Now, uh, next week, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to give you a full behind the scene review of what I personally consider to be the, the ideal uh, lens for hybrid coverage, and that is the Tamron 17 to uh, 70 f2.8. Uh, the lens is just simply amazing. Um, it has vibration control. Um, and then you can zoom in and out uh, as well as you get the the wide end of the spectrum at 17 millimeter and then you also get the tight end of, of the spectrum at 70 so uh, you get the best of both world it's f 2.8 throughout and I personally consider that lens to be the ideal lens for hybrid coverage and uh, if you like this kind of content I would really appreciate if you don't already subscribe to my channel to subscribe and that's it for today. See you in the next video. Peace.